Hello. Today we're going to talk a little bit about sound signals for use on the water, marine sound signals. We're going to use a subset of the sound signals, those that you would most likely hear or deal with if you are operating a small boat in the Puget Sound area, <coughs> greater Seattle area, northwest. First, a few study hints to help you get started here. Make don't buy flashcards. The little hand-eye coordination of writing the card down, the stuff information helps you. If you have problems, write extra cards. That little helps to coordinate it. Make lots of cards. I can't say that you'll never have too many cards, but don't try and put too many concepts on one card. It tends to, at least for me, confused me quite a bit, and I had to make some simpler cards. Check the flipping of the cards, because you have the question on one side and the answer on the other, and different people turn the cards over different ways. And turning the card over and finding out that it's upside down for the answer really it, it's annoying. So make a couple of three cards, practice the flipping, and make sure that that's the way that you want to, to do the question and answer. Write the rule number and paragraph somewhere on the card so that if there is a question about where something came from, there's a little confusion with something, it makes it easier to go back and find the particular uh, rule and paragraph that you are referencing. Work the rules forwards and backwards, especially for lights and sounds, because what you do is have the question for a while and then flip them over, look at the answer, which would typically be, okay, what kind of a vessel makes a prolonged short short? kind of a thing. So um, just make sure that uh, the practice does help forwards and backwards. And uh, here's a couple of different cards that I made. Um, yeah, my printing's not very well, but it works, it works pretty good. And you flip them forwards and backwards. Now, why do we have sound signals? There's two types, maneuvering and warning or danger signals and restricted visibility signals. So if you don't understand what uh, the other vessel is doing or if you are maneuvering or the other vessel's maneuvering, that's one set. And if you can't see where you're going, that's the second set. A few definitions here that are critical. A short blast, that's about one second long. How about a long blast? How long is that? Well, if you answered anything, that's wrong because there is no long blast in the rules of the road. It's only a prolonged blast that is about four to six seconds. And yes, I'm being a little bit picky here. However, if you're taking an Avril's exam, they will from time to time have an answer that says long blast. And you now know immediately that that is wrong. That only the prolonged blast options are ones that you have to worry about. The uh, sound signals may be supplemented with a light signal, international and all around white light, inland and all around white or yellow light. Why would you supplement that? Well, if there's a high noise environment, uh, the other, other vessel is a high noise, you might want to be have them be able to see what your sound signal is. The one that you need to also keep always in mind is the danger signal, which is five or more short blasts. So if it's seven short blasts, yes, that's still a danger signal. It's just somebody's having trouble counting. So maneuvering. International, it's I am altering. No reply unless you disagree or see that there's a danger. There is an international exception, however, and that is in the narrow channel. It's a I intend to, and it does require a response when you're in a narrow channel. That would be like uh, Lake Washington Ship Canal or in the, uh, the fairway of a marina or any other area that's narrow where it's restricted. Inland is I intend to. It does require a response. So for maneuvering, international, sound and go. Inland is OK if you reply with the same. And this little clock thing is what has helped me to keep and remember everything. A short altering to starboard, short short altering to port, and three shorts operating propulsion astern. And remember, five or more short 
is a danger signal. You need to look around and see if you are the object of that. When leaving the dock, international, you do not require a signal. Inland, it's one prolonged. Now here in Puget Sound, the Seattle area, the ferry trap, the ferries, they have one prolonged and that's by local custom. You're allowed to have sound signals that as long as they do not interfere or make confusion with the regular signals. So that's a local custom here in Seattle and it's not required. And I've had arguments with several people over that, especially coxswains in the Coast Guard. They're an easy one to trip up on that. San Juan Islands, the ferries have three shorts when they're leaving the dock, i.e. they're saying I'm operating a stern propulsion, but the ferries are double-ended, so they're never, when they're leaving the dock, operating a stern. So it's a little misnomer, but it lets you know that they're getting ready to pull out in front of you, which is the whole intent of these things, which is to let another vessel know so that there's not a danger. A narrow channel or fairway when you're overtaking, international, I intend to, prolong, prolong, short, short for starboard, prolong, prolong, short, short for port. Some people look on that as a wake up type of an affair. And prolong, short, prolong, short is required if you're in agreement. Vessels inside of each other, or they're approaching each other, if you have either vessel fails to understand the intentions or action of the other, or if you're in doubt that sufficient action is being taken to avoid a collision, shall sound five or more rapid or short blasts. That's a requirement on that. It's not optional. Nearing a bend or an area where another vessel may be obstructed, such as a fairway in a marina, marinas on the ship canal, for instance, because they build the housing uh, right up to the edge, so you have very restricted visibility, shall sound one prolonged blast. And again, the ferries leaving the slips, that's a local custom. But when you're going um, out of a uh, marina, on the ship canal, very, very difficult to see. And you have a lot of boats will come right down along the edge, so you won't see them until about a boat length. So you also want to be cautious when you come out of the uh, marinas. Restricted visibility, sort of what is it? Any condition which is restricted by fog, mist, falling snow, heavy rainstorms, sandstorms, or any other similar causes, i.e. anything that makes it so you cannot see. Can you have restricted visibility in clear sunlight? Yes, if you're operating in the vicinity of an area of restricted visibility, such as along the edge of a fog bank, or could be a, a fire or something on the shore uh, that restricts your ability to see through the cloud of smoke. Probably not something you want to go into because smoke is dangerous, but you need to be aware that that is restricted visibility also. So powerboat underway making way they sound a single, single prolonged blast, not more than two minutes. Catch the not more than. So a single prolonged at 37 seconds is still a power vessel underway making way. Probably a small boat without a watch and a really nervous person on it, but still it's a power boat. Power driven underway not making way, then you sound too prolonged at not more than two minutes. Sailing underway, that's a prolonged short short, again, not more than two minutes. Now, however, prolonged short short does have a bit of a caution because it's a lot of different vessels, not under command, sailing, towing alongside, towing astern, fishing, fishing at an anchor, ram, restricted in, in the ability to maneuver, either working or at anchor or and at anchor, excuse me, constrained by draft, international. Inland, everybody is constrained by draft. You no special rights for that. Or if you're at anchor. Pilot vessel, four shorts, short, 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 not more than two minutes. 
and they may add to existing sounds when engaged in work. So a pilot vessel, typically a power, they can add that if they're underway and engaged in their work, such as transferring somebody uh, to and from another vessel. Vessel if being towed and manned, prolonged with three shorts, interval of not more than two minutes. When practical, the signal should be made immediately following the signal made by the towing vessel because you want to sort of hook it up and make people understand that both vessels are tied together, as in like with the tow line, so don't go between the two. And a recreational vessel, yes, if you're being towed by somebody and it's restricted visibility, then if you're on your boat, you need to sound that signal to match up with the one that's towing you. And if you're in a long string, more than one towed vessel, the last vessel shall sound the tow signal. An anchor, a rapidly ringing bell for five seconds in an interval of not more than one minute. Vessels over a hundred meters shall sound a bell in the fore peak and a gong for five seconds in the after part of the vessel. So you hear two different things, you know that it's large that, uh, and you don't want to go between the two sounds. They may also sound a short, prolonged, and short blast of the whistle. The vessel of ground is the same at anchor, but they shall add three separate and distinctive strokes of the bell immediately before and after the bell. So it'll be ding, 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 then ding, 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 ding. And I thank you for your interest in boating safety, and hopefully this quick review will have um, helped your safety on the water. Look forward to seeing you on the water, and take care, and have a nice day.